So we have breaking news. Executive producers Lynn Gibson and Wayne Overstreet are excited to announce that the movie project Followed is going to be available on all digital platforms September 1st. Yes. Oh my goodness. This is such an incredible feat for Go Media Productions. I am, I can be more proud of these two people because I have known them for a long time and this has just been a blessing in the making. Holy, typically, my co host, Miko, is here with me like for everything. But I got a phone call last night. I was like, let's do it because we don't have that much time. And I wasn't going to do her like that and be like, okay, girl, we got to get on the phone an hour. Um, so she's just going to have to catch the next one, you know? But we have some amazing stuff going on Tuesday as well. So, you know, she be all right. One day I was scrolling through my email and I saw this headline news in Variety Magazine about Go Media, and I saw two people who are very dear to my heart. I saw both their names pop up, and I was like, no. It's my friend, $150 million, like, what? Mm -mm, not a friend of mine, like, yeah. Now we really about to be friends. And I was like, 150 million, like, wait a minute. So let's go back. Let's go back. I'm going to read this, how they put it so eloquently in the article. It says, Georgia's billion dollar film industry is a star for the Georgia economy, but it loses too much post-production work to Hollywood. That's true. Lynn Gibson and Wayne Overstreet say it doesn't have to be that way. Their new company, Go Media Productions, is investing 100 and 50 million into Georgia's film business that will keep those important post-production jobs like film editing, sound design, and special effects from being lost to the West Coast. How incredible is that? We'll be able to keep everything like right here in-house. So until we're able to secure post-productions, we will always be susceptible to Hollywood deciding they could leave. Overstreet told Atlanta Business Chronicle, we indirectly assure that the $150 million, $150 million, I have to just keep saying that because I like the way it rolls off my tongue to know that, you know, that's the kind of support team I have. You know, that's the backing I got up in here. A real life convos, you know? Us women in film and entertainment have to know who the real men and women, oh, the real men and women, the real men in film and entertainment are as well. We gotta know who the game changers are. So he says we indirectly assure that the 150 million is spent in Georgia, on business in Georgia with Georgia firms. So now we bring to the stage Lynn Gibson. Wait, I got to do my drum roll. I got to do my drum roll. Let me do my drum roll for Lynn Gibson. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So I know you're wondering why I have a hat on that says wife, and you know that I'm not married. <laughs> okay, what but does that mean? That's for women in film and entertainment. Okay, I right, so do. You're interviewing uh, Real Wife Combos, and this is where we have real R-E-E-L, wife, Women in Film and Entertainment Conversations with Women in the Film and Entertainment Industry. Okay, Only dope. Women, they can't be in relationships because, you know, the men is out there. You guys got wives at home, but the women can't even get in a relationship because they trying to keep up with the men. So I'm... Well, I don't have a wife at home, so... <laughs> what? Okay, that's okay. Yeah, but that's about the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was briefly, you know, introducing everybody to you, our audience, and I was telling them about, I've known both you and Wayne a long time, and, and both of you 
are dear to my heart in different, you know, scenarios and different situations. But this has been a long time coming. Like you have paid your dues to the film and oh, yeah. you have busted and grinded, you know, with the Peachtree Village International Film Festival year after year after year. I think I saw our Facebook anniversary was like, what, 11 years, 12 years old? Yeah, it's crazy. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what hard work does. You know, you find business right. partners, lose business partners, you come and have new business partners, and you know, like, you just, in this film and entertainment business, it's all about who you're gelling with, who has the same ideas, you know, like-minded people that can see your vision, and you guys can just come together and move forward. Absolutely. You're right. You're so right. why don't you just break it down in the cliff notes and give people a little introduction because this is a national audience, you know, and everybody is not privileged to know who Lynn Gibson is like I am. <laughs> sure. So I'm Lynn Gibson. I'm founder of the Peace Tree Village International Film Festival, but more importantly and newly, I'm also the co-founder as well as the co-CEO of Go Media Productions. Yes. Uh, so very excited about that. Okay, so this was like such a grand opportunity because you guys do post productions and you fund post production projects, executive produce. And how important was this deal to the state of Georgia? Wow. Uh, you know, for me, very important, I think, because post-production always leaves the state. You know, we, we get the film, you know, to come here, the television series to come here, and they shoot, but they leave. They go back to L.A., New York, or wherever, right. and complete post-production. So we said, you know what, we have to find a way to keep productions here, to bring more capital to the city and the state. And the only way to do that was to find a group of individuals that were willing to invest in what we were doing. And we were able to find that. We we're excited that we were able to move that initiative forward. Man. So I, I was telling everybody how I was sitting here, you know, going through my emails and I saw a variety article pop up and I saw Lynn Gibson, Wayne Overstreet, and all, they had me at 150 million, okay? <laughs> I said I like to keep saying that because I just like how it rolls off my tongue you know <laughs> me, a woman in film and in entertainment affiliated with someone with 150 million dollars in investment and no you guys I haven't even hit them up for like not even one penny to do a sizzle reel nothing yet <laughs> and, you know I'm just trying to let them get out there with the big dogs first and then the women, you know, we're used to being on the back plate, on the back burner. But it's all good because I know they got me. Okay? Oh, oh, you know that. We got, got you. We got you. So how did you find your partner, Wayne Overstreet? Like, did you guys know each other? Were you college roommates? Did y'all used to run um, a USC on the field together back in the day? <laughs> um, you know, I've been knowing Wayne uh, for – almost 10 years now. Wow. So uh -oh. Wayne, and I, Wayne and I met through a mutual friend and immediately, you know, we, we knew that there was, you know, synergy. Obviously we were both in the business and I started, you know, referring business his way, you know, for post-production. Right. Uh -oh. and, you know, in the he, he, his <laughs> was burning. He was like, uh-uh, let's, let's see. We're going to act like we don't know. We bring him in and then I'm start bad mouthing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we uh we you know we started sharing business you know post-production and production in general and then from there um you know wayne actually became um a part of the board of the film the film festival the peace Street village film festival so from there you know we we continue to work with each other so um, Wayne was a part of the film festival handing out flyers for you guys you know out in the lobby. <laughs> he, was, he was doing a little bit of everything, you know, that's the, you know, Mr. Executive. So he was helping us get deals done. 
there's the man who needs no introduction because we've been introducing you. You know, we told him you was doing big things and you know, you had the daughter in college. So, you know, that's always a, you never know what's going on in Wayne's life. Cause I know my production people, post-production, they don't have to be on time though, like the production people. Cause then the people are waiting on them. But this is Wayne Overstreet. And Lynn was just telling us how you guys met. And we are so excited here at, okay, let me go back. I know Wayne is wondering why I have this hat on that says white. And Wayne absolutely knows I'm not married. <laughs> you know why, Wayne? Why do you have the hat on? Because this stands for a woman in film and entertainment. Oh, nice. I love it. You guys are interviewing oh. with real wife convos, but it's R-E-E-L, wife convos where weekly we have real wife convos with women in film and entertainment because most of the women are single that are in film and entertainment. So I felt it was my duty to make them a real wife. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This I love it. Concept. I love it. So once a month we do interview male men in film and entertainment. So we have a highlight for that man or men that is doing big things because you know where will we be without you guys or is that the other way around i think it's the other way around <laughs> but more important is yeah. i don't know where you two would be without each other because you guys have managed to join forces and do something that by creating go media productions that's life-changing for the state of georgia like this is one for the history books well, we're, we're excited about it. That's for sure. You know, God is good. We've known each other for years and for us to come together for this particular project and for this um, uh, joint venture, if you would, you know, GO stands for Gibson and Overstreet. So it just kind of oh, all fell in the place. I was wondering yeah. about that. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it was divine, we feel. And and the things we've been able to do together, you know, we we both always had the mantra, together we're stronger. And we both kind of shared that with people in our circles and constantly kind of champion that cause that, hey, guys, together we're stronger. And uh, for us to be able to come together, both of us like-minded individuals, and apply what we've been preached and uh, has, has been harmonious and, and been... Um, it's just hard to explain how things have opened up for us, how things continue to come together and we continue to expand and evolve. You know, like Lynn, I think when I first came on, he was talking about the post-production aspect of our initial deal. Right. But since then, we've gone into distribution. We've gone into to p and and financing um, through p and and um, equity and, and debt P&A, um, funding as well. So um, how many cell phones various partners. How many extra cell phones did you have to get now? <laughs> <laughs> I still have one. Uh, oh, I really? still have one. My number's still the same, you know. Um, but we we do have a lot to manage right now, and you know we're 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 figuring it out as we go. Uh, corona or COVID, as it's now referred to, has right. um, you know we've been blessed throughout this process throughout this quarantine period it's given us access to people that we normally you know people who might be on set or who are tied up have suddenly been stationary suddenly have time had time to read scripts or look at reports or look at projects um and give it the time and attention that we needed to get them engaged right and then once we were able to engage them um fortunately we had the information needed um and uh, the projects available that that were appealing that is awesome now let me ask you this because i know i was telling lynn how i was sitting here minding my own business like i always do every day and i'm online looking at <laughs> my emails <laughs> and i see this email variety i'm looking and i'm like what way over street lynn gibson 150 mil what so I didn't know if you guys were just giving out 150 million 
and why Wayne or Lynn didn't call me first. But when I went to read further, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm affiliated with these men. These are my real friends in real life. And I'm just like, this is so incredible. So people are calling you, I'm sure, you know, pitching things, we're doing this, we're doing that. How do you guys get together and decide? Okay, let's take this for example. Dropping September 1st on all digital platforms, follow the movie. So how did you guys come together? How did that even make it to your plate? With every well, with all the collard greens and everything you had on your plate, <laughs> how was you able to squeeze that on there? You, you know, it's interesting. Um, Wayne and I have a saying is that, you know, if a project comes to us once, it's going to come three times, right? right? If we don't get involved with the project initially. Initially, the project was introduced to us by a mutual friend that is not even from the U.S., um, a friend of ours from Australia. And we looked at the project and we said, you know, this was a, a cool project. We weren't able to make the deal happen at that time. And we fast forward six months later, you know, well into COVID-19 um, through conversation with another another mutual friend named Grant Kramer, who was with or still with Global Pictures Media. And he mentioned, you know, hey, you know, we have this, uh, this film that we're releasing called Followed. And we're like, hold up, we know about that movie. And we were like, we, we like it. We would like to see how we could get involved. So we had deeper conversations about it and we worked out the deal and we decided to come on and help finance the PNA and distribute the film worldwide. So had they shot the film the already? Time. It just made sense. Had they already shot the film and then they needed to go in the post or were they in pre-production or what where point were they at in the film when they came to you? When they came to us, the, the film was actually already completed. Okay. They were at the stage where they needed the, the print and advertising capital to release the film worldwide. Okay. So didn't that make you feel so good that you was in a position, like now you're in the seat, you know, with the yes and the no, besides being on that other side of it. Oh, that's got to be yeah, a good feeling. Yeah, that's definitely a different role for us as we've always been, you know, seeking the funds. And, um, and and we still are in that role, but we have resources we can go to. We have partners that are on standby with the resources and, and ready to deploy on particular projects that we green light. So it's great to be in the position of green lighting. Yeah. Um, and in that film, our partners came on and helped with finishing funds for the post, coincidentally. And then we partnered with them to do the print and advertising. So we, we've got a, a, you know, we had a great run in the drive-ins. Uh, it was actually the number one movie in the nation for two weeks. Wow. Uh, it was during COVID and, you know, theaters were, were not at their normal capacity, but we always say right. it was still number one uh, for two weeks and, and we'll always be able to say that. So that was, that was really awesome. That was, um, you know, it was truly a blessing to be able to do that. And now we're really excited about the September 1st release on digital, all the digital platforms, like you mentioned, because the film is, um, it's got a great following. It's got a great fan base. Uh, it's the kind of film that um, we think will do well and will be um, known for years, kind of like Blair Witch or Paranormal Activity or some of the other films that have preceded it that it's been compared to. Now, why do you think that horror films always, people like shooting horror because they said they, they're easy to shoot and they sell fast and they can sell, I guess, internationally. What is it about horror that everyone just loves because I'm scared of my own shadow? <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I mean, one of the reasons horror works is because it translates across all demos and it translates, you know, around the world. So, you know, what's normally scary to you is scary to everyone. You know, comedy is different, drama is different, but horror movies, 
are pretty much the same, you know, in terms of everyone being on the same plateau and understanding what's happening on that screen. So that's one of the reasons why they do very well around the world. And what I noticed about horror is they have their own category when it comes to um, the articles, the blogs. Like, there are a lot of blogs just geared toward horror. Like, they have their, their own little lane. I didn't realize that lane was like a freeway, though. You know, it's not a little <laughs> lane. It's an open highway. So that's, that's amazing. I guess everybody likes the thrill-seeking, you know, being thrill-seeking. Yeah, absolutely. The factor. The shock factor, like you say, the thrill seeking. Uh, I think it just it. Everybody, like Lynn said, being afraid. A horror movie is international. It's it's kind of it. It's it translates in every genre and every. I mean, every uh, culture. You know, horror is the same. You know, often we hear uh, as we look to distribute and to develop films that, believe it or not, comedies don't do well internationally. Um, because from culture to culture, the comedy is different. True. And what's considered funny is different. And jokes that land here don't land in other places. Yeah, so. they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's almost like Atlanta, us having our own culture, because I was at an award show, and an Atlanta artist was on the stage, and the people in the West Coast were looking like, but whereas I knew if they were on the stage here, it would have just been like a whole different vibe, but they were just trying to figure it out. They were rocking with it like, okay, I guess since they're on stage, but I could see the confusion in everybody's face like, what is going on here? And that's the beauty of Atlanta having our own culture. And that is the beauty of Go Media Productions because you guys have are specializing in post-production and helping do things. And I don't know of another, you know, company that has that amount of money to, to do investments and make those kind of calls. And we can keep everything in Georgia and not have to source out, you know, the post. That, that had to be aggravating for you, Wayne, because you know, films are done and you're like, I could do this. And they're like, oh yeah, well, we're gonna bring in so-and-so. And you're like, but, but just get, let me get a chance, you know? Yes, and there's so many qualified people here in Atlanta. Right. Uh, and that's, that's part of our mission to, we feel like if we keep the post here, if we're able to finance the projects uh, and, and help the directors and writers that are local, then we have a, a sustainable ecosystem right. where we, we write, direct, shoot, and do the post production here in Georgia, in Atlanta, and, and have a sustainable model. Now, we have partners internationally, fortunately. Okay. We've got partners uh, in Europe. We've got partners in Africa. Uh, we got partners in L.A., New York. You know, so our, our business has, it started as a Georgia thing, but fortunately for us, it has expanded internationally. But, uh, you know, Atlanta is home for us, and we're always looking to, to grow the, the industry here. You know, we, we want to do a lot of work with, with students, you know, you got basically 10 major universities here in Atlanta, and we want to reach out and, and partners with, do partnerships with the universities to help to train and develop the next generation of filmmakers. Oh, you guys are going to end up with your own class that people can get a degree in <laughs> at the college. If they can give Candy Burris a, a class at Georgia State on just on her life, I think. The class, I'm like, wait a minute, oh, wow. class on her life? Wow. This her life as an artist? And I'm like, I would take that class. Because that, if I don't get an A in that class, then I don't even belong in Georgia. I don't need to eat <laughs> another peach ever. <laughs> now, let me ask you about the actors. Are the actors um, from Georgia? Are they international? Are they from all over? Did you guys get a chance to interact with them at all? Uh, just in general? Yeah. Yeah, in general, for sure. We're we're working with actors from everywhere. No, in uh, follow. In, in the follow, in follow, the actors are are you know U.S. based. Okay. Um, but but all throughout the U.S., not not just Georgia. But our interaction was mainly you know with the marketing and distribution on the film. So we didn't get a lot of interaction with the stars, but they I think they're all. U.S. based. Yeah, it's, it's a great um, topic. You know, follow because everybody's 
following everybody and right, right okay right. and then the twitter is huge because of donald trump you know he loves to tweet <laughs> so there's so many marketing factors that you know you could tie in when you're putting the word out that those algorithms can go through where it really helps what you're doing because everything ties right in so i love it i loved everything you know about the trailer the suspense that it built and just the fact that you guys were like, you know what? This is a win-win for us. Now, was it the three times that it got to you that y'all was like, all right, there it is. That's the third one. Let's make a move. You know, that happens a lot, you know, when projects come back. And, you know, it's just the nature of the beast, you know, in terms of the business. Um, the first time again, at that time, they were looking for finishing funds. And we were just totally, our, our focus at the time was strictly post-production. Right. We were like, if it's not post-production, we're not looking at anything else. And that was at that time. Right. And then they came back again, and it was still, you know, finishing funds. And we were like, no, post-production. <laughs> but the timing was right the third time. We were looking at distribution and printing advertising. And it fell right in our space, and we got involved. It was and a perfect that's, fit. That's why you cannot give up. When they say no, you say yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, no, you say okay next week. <laughs> well, well, we're the, as people, we generally always have a plan B and a plan C. Yep. Because we're used to having to adjust on the fly and be liquid, be be fluid in our motion, uh, right. because we often do get no's. And, and we're, we just have to keep pushing. And as a filmmaker, in general, you have to keep pushing. But for us, kind of like what you mentioned, that's why we're on the line with you, Jonelle, because you know about the algorithms and the things, the, right. the keywords that, that trigger, you know, um, response on the internet and that are gonna get a certain, um, allow for traffic flow. Oh, you and know with the name followed, we were like, you know what? Everybody's following everybody, you know, everybody's on the online. This is this is perfect. This is the kind of thing that could really get momentum and yeah. really take off. Um, it's something everybody can relate to. It's something everybody is doing, young and old. So we felt like it checked a lot of boxes. It right. it appealed to a lot of different genres and age groups and economic groups and and it was a it was a perfect fit for our expansion into print and advertising. So do you guys have to have a brick and mortar um, facility for your whole team or does it have to work that way with everything being how it is? So digital and emails and everything else going on? Well, we, we don't necessarily have to. And obviously, you know, now, you know, doing COVID-19, most right. people are working from home anyway. So for us, luckily, most of what we do is done, you know, via the internet and our cell phones. So we're we're right in pocket, you know, with what we need to do to keep business flowing. Uh, eventually, we will move into a new space, but right now, I mean, yeah, we're excited. Don't have to worry about the checklist, the six feet apart, the mask. If one employee is gonna come in, like that is so awesome to not have to to go through that. Honestly, you know. Even exactly. if you COVID, you looking at people across the room like, uh-uh, go on back home with all that coughing and sneezing. <laughs> because, you know, when you have a family, you can't, it's not just you. So if you take it home, yeah. it's everybody. So it's, it's playing it safe. And it obviously did not slow you down. Because every time you guys open up your website, you see go. So, you know, you can't help but to do anything but be regressive. I love it. I I love all everything about it. I don't know why I was talking to Wayne about Twitter because I know Wayne does not tweet. <laughs> but <laughs> if Wayne knew that it was going to be a smash for that, and he don't tweet, then you know it, it's really it's a good thing. Now, Lynn, I don't know. Do you tweet? Uh, just a little bit. I'm more I'm more of the IG and Facebook guy, but okay, you know, okay, a little bit with it, a little Twitter. Yeah, that's for the more mature audience. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps me up to date. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, I'm gonna keep both of y'all up to date. You know, now that now that we found love, what are we gonna do? 
<laughs> That's the question I'm going to put y'all in right there. But I wanted I'm everyone just glad to get to, uh, Sorry, I mean to, to cut you off. I just wanted everyone to see you. your faces because people read the articles and they see you, but you know, they don't get to hear the conversations, which is why, you know, I kind of created this platform because sometimes people just want to hear real conversations like, okay, break it down. What do I need to do? Not the Hollywood talk, not the let's do lunch. And now, you know, nobody can't say that no more. Let's do lunch. Unless you do it on Zoom and you eat exactly. and we talk. And, and, but here yeah, we okay. can talk and, about and what I like to say. You know what I'm people have to say, get at me. Uh, <laughs> If you already know, when they say get at me, that means yeah. catch me if you can. <laughs> well, us, you know, we believe in um, championing the cause of the underserved because we're a part of the underserved. Um, yes. And we, you know, we, we try to do business with, with everybody, but we do try to make a conscious effort to uh, include and incorporate um, people that we can, people, especially young kids, the HBCUs, people of that nature. It's, it's always part of our mission to give back and to help and to give opportunity where there was none. You know, right. we've been fortunate to have some really great partnerships with some really great people who have opened doors for us. And, and throughout my life, I've been blessed in that way. So we just try to do things, you know, justly, in order, decently, right. and, um, and look out for everybody we can work as hard as we can, and we try to do what we say we're going to do. Now, and Lynn that, has that uh, Rolodex, though. Lynn got that <laughs> Rolodex in 2009 from the first film festival, okay? And he has contacts with every single person in the industry because they've all come to be a part of that film festival. And that's what film festivals are actually made for. And it's a lot of out of work actors. And I asked them, you know, doing public relations, like, oh, you going to the film festival this year? And they're like, no, I don't have any film, so I'm not going. Like, that is like, you not, you missing it. You missing everything. Like, that's where you go, where you see the people that you're not gonna see anywhere else, okay? Let me tell you, the NAACP Image Awards at the party, <laughs> And the film festivals is where you're going to see people that you cannot get on the phone. And they're drinking. You can just go pin them up in that corner and, and pitch, 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 you know? When I Absolutely. moved to Georgia, people did business differently because here people wanted to have you come into an office. They want, they judge you by how you were dressed and, you know, then they might have looked you up online, but not really. But in California, it was like, okay, meet me tonight at the bar. People did business, you know, out socially, and that's how they solidified things. So everything was so different here. Now, let me ask you, are you guys getting, um, let's say on the average a day, how many email pitches do you get from people needing your services? Wow. Um, we, we, probably, we probably get... Now it's even more. I, I would say at least ten projects a week. Ten we projects a week. Yeah, so you know, two two a day, you know, two two a day during the week, and sometimes more. You know, wow. it just depends. Uh, sometimes we get packages from groups, or you know, even studios. You know, so we're getting projects from a variety of different individuals at all times. So you guys are so calm cool and collective just is that a production <laughs> thing you know like let me just keep my calm keep my inner peace or is that because it's sunday and we're talking because i don't know i i just feel like you guys should be so overwhelmed right now y'all look be looking at your watch like okay can she hurry up uh, no we i think it's both of our nature you know we get that a lot uh we don't get too excited we don't get too down you know, in this industry, things come and go. It's a an ebb and flow. Um, Sometimes deals may get to to third base and never make it home. So right. you 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 be somewhat crazy. It could it could make you crazy if you get too high or too low. Right. Uh, we're we're always thankful and appreciative of everything we get, and we know, hey, nothing's promised, and 
you know, just we know that we're blessed to be here. So right. we are thankful. We're excited, but we contain our excitement uh, until after the deal is done in most cases. And even then, we're fortunately busy and on to the next one. So right. you don't that, need that, to have that Pop a bottle or nothing, because it's like, okay, now we got to worry about this over here. Well, Can now you, you got to deliver. How important integrity is in this business? Wow. And, and integrity is everything. We tell people that all the time because what, what happens is the business is very, very small, right? Very, very and, small. And what happens a lot of times, Wayne and I will end up on conversations or in meetings, and there's someone else that we've met that we know from 10 years ago. And it's always a good thing because we know that we, we had and we kept good integrity. Right. Throughout, the, throughout the business, throughout our careers. So we don't, you know, we don't have to go hide. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that is, it's so important to keep a good name and have great integrity. That's, your name is everything in this business. So integrity is so important. And it no. happens a lot. It happens a lot with us where a lot of deals we were able to complete or make is because there was somebody on the other side that had history with one of us that yes. did, a, did something with us in the past or know us from an, a previous situation. And we always say to each other, man, it's a good thing we were good to them. It's a good thing we had a good relationship with them because yes. the whole deal could have fell apart just on the fact that, oh no, that person's in the deal who you didn't have good interaction with. So we, we just always say, you know, from the CEO, from the custodian to the CEO, we treat everybody the same because you know nobody is more important or less important and you never know whose path you're going to cross again right I always tell people be um, good to the, be good to the pas and the interns because one day they're going to be the vps in, in the in the in the directors in the last people 12, yes I, in the last 12 years i've seen so many people go from being a pa to the <laughs> EPing award shows EPing these all the um the gaming shows and everything it's just like man and it's it's a proud feeling i didn't mean to cut you off wayne what were you saying no I no excited. i was just saying that the initiative that it takes to be a pa an intern um to, to put yourself out on the limb and be willing to serve and it just takes a, a certain <laughs> mindset that's also the same mindset that's going to make them leaders one day and right. It's the kind of mindset that is going to help them succeed. So I always tell people, you know, blessings aren't going to come and knock on your door. You got to get out and make things happen. And the people who are willing to come on set and be a PA or intern at, at, at one of these networks, they, they have drive and initiative and they're going to be somebody one day. How important so, is humility being humble? Oh man! So I mean, it's it's right up there with integrity because you know you you have to be you have to be humble because again you never know what's going to happen next, right? And you never know who's going to need next. So being humble is a part of the journey that that's needed every step of the way. No matter if you just achieved something or if you just lost something, you got to remain humble the entire time. I know it's hard sometimes, you know, you, right. you got a million dollar check. You just, you know, got a project green lit, but you know, you got to remain humble. Um, every, everybody's watching. Everybody's watching the entire time. So you, and you never know who you're going to need or what you're going to need. So it's very important. It's very important. So what are the top three things that you would say would get a project in your door the fastest? Because sometimes, you know, people can come to you and they have this great project, a great idea, but you already know their work, workmanship, you know, that works well with others, like on the report card. <laughs> <Check>. <laughs> so no matter how good it is, it's like, you know what? Don't do it. Don't do it. Like, what would you say the three most important things if people came to you besides being persistent that you would say, okay, 
And the fact that if it's a no right now, don't get an attitude, don't run out and just be all mad and, oh, they hate no my project. You know what I mean? Like, just be patient. Be patient because things roll back around, roll back around in a good attitude and a humble, okay, not right now. I got you. So I'm going to keep bringing stuff your way. We'll go a whole lot further than the attitude. But right now, we're in the, I want it right now, right now. Everybody wants everything right now, right now. And the people who want it right now is probably the people who haven't been in the business the longest who really don't have a clue. So let me let you guys break that down. How do you like people to approach you? Because I know people are, a lot of them are probably just approaching it all wrong, where you're like, if he would have just did it like this, maybe we could, you know, it could work. Because that's, the pitch is a big part of the deal, right? Or no? No, you're, you're absolutely right. And, okay. and preparation is everything to us. You know, what happens, you come, you come in the door, you know, and we, first impression is everything. We always hear that, right? right. And if you're not prepared, you know, you're going to lose. Um, it's, it's just, it's so important. You know, everybody, like you said, everybody want a microwave career, right? They want to they wanna basically get from zero to 100 in two minutes. And it's impossible to do that if you're, if you're going to be successful. So preparation, you got to study. You got to put yourself in a position where you're taking the time to learn the craft and come extremely prepared. You know, so many times that we will, you know, meet a young man or a young woman that come with a pitch or an idea and we're like, wow, we really like that. And then when we ask, you know, what's the budget? Or we ask the question, you know, um, who do you have in mind as a cast? Or we ask, you know, when would you like to shoot it? Or what's your schedule? Uh, or there's so many questions that right. we can ask and that we do ask. And oftentimes we get nothing. We get a quiet response. Yeah. And, and to us, we said, you know, you're not, you're not ready. You're not ready. So when you come to the table, you got to come correct. You got to be prepared. That's, that's Absolutely. most important. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and realize that, with that preparation, um, do the things necessary that people have told you. You know, I, we have people say, well, I've been working on this project 10 years. <laughs> and they bring that 10 years of frustration with them. Uh, Treat every meeting like a fresh new meeting. Right. The, per the person on the other side hasn't been developing your project for 10 years like you have. Um, or if you're missing some ingredients in your project, take heed to that and, and, and address it. You know, if you don't have a budget, get a budget done. If you don't have uh, any talent attached or talent wish list, then have that. Because for us, that that's a driving factor. Because we got to assess your budget. We got to, and, and often we got to look at the talent and see, is this talent um, compare or comparable to your budget? Often filmmakers will say, well, we want to do it for $10 million and have no idea why. Or they want to do it for $10 million, but their lead cast, unfortunately, the way this business is structured, haven't done a film over a million dollars or hasn't had a film make over a million dollars. So now you're asking investors to invest $10 million in a project, but when they look at it, they don't see the potential return on their investment. They don't see the opportunity there, the, 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 the pieces to the puzzle in place that say, okay, we can take this and we can make $10 million. Right. You know, you got to treat it like a business. Because while it's film and television, it's the business of film and television. Right. And you have to be able to show people that you have the business part of it figured out. And often creatives, you know, we fall in love with, with our passion projects, but they haven't looked at the business elements and say, you know what, I love this project. It's a great project. And this is why you should get behind this project because I've outlined how you can make your money back. Right. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. Someone came to me and they they said um, they had a song that they wanted to do. The song wasn't even mixed and mastered. Now they were moving on to the merchandise part. So they're like, they're going to get all this merchandise made so that they can make money off the merchandise. So they're going to attach it to the song. But I was like, 
but you haven't sold any music. What if people like the merchandise and they don't like the song? Are you ready to go into the apparel business? Because that's what you're going to land. And there was like, I never really thought about that. And I'm like, how could you not? I was like, you know what? I got to call you back. <laughs> because right then and there, I was like, I'm not ready to be an instructor, you know, at this point, because there's too many people that season that's ready to go. And they go back to teaching class. It's like, don't even call me no more. And I really was kind of like, you know what? I need to an answer by midnight or, you know, it was nice meeting you. And they were like, wow. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 like, and that's we business. It. It's just all business. Now tell me the one film that you guys can remember that, of course, was no fault of yours, that you thought was going to be a really huge film because of everyone attached to it, and it just bombed. Wow. Right, it comes to mind. Trivia. Sadly, those films aren't memorable. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's exactly what I remember. It was a movie with Carmen and Queen Latifah. I think it was a basketball movie or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you thought, um, yeah, just right. Yes, and everybody just knew, like, and I heard, like, that movie put the person who financed the film just had to go out of business. <laughs> you know, the sad thing, sad thing about that is it's actually a good movie. It is you a know, great movie. Sometimes the, the, the projected um, desired dollar value return is again higher than than a particular movie um is is worthy of or can return so and then sometimes it's all about you know print and advertising there did they know. put the right amount of advertising in because we were talking about this just today we right. have the greatest film in the world but if nobody knows it's out there then it's not going to do well and yeah. then people will We'll discover it over time because people have been watching it online or in a digital platform. But for that initial investment, it didn't do well. Or by box office standards, it didn't do well. But you, it's all about, and that's why we're in the print and advertising business, because we realize that that's the most critical piece. Right. And a lot of Very films, critical. you know, lower budget films that we were, uh, I guess, uh, privy to to be a part of or to see, you know, often our films have, you know, especially, you know, African-American-based films, they got 10% P&A. Right. Uh, and general market films have 80 to 100% P&A. Wow. And that's a, that's, you know, that's a critical, um, that, that's a big disparity there. So for us, we realized and have learned that if you put the right amount of P&A and if you put uh, 80 to 100 percent of your budget in PNA as well, a film will do well. People often say that Get Out was made for three million dollars, but Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong. The PNA budget was 20 million. Yeah, yeah, definitely the PNA budget, you know, was was more than what they spent, you know, to produce the film. And wow. you, you make some really, really important points. Um, to answer your your question, Janelle, about a film that I remember. It's actually several, but I'll mention three that most of us as African-Americans consider classics today. One being Love Jones, another being Dead Presidents, and another being The Inkwell. All three of those films didn't do that well. Really? And, and I know, and see, I know that's the, that's the response of most people. They say, really? Because that those films obviously are considered classics today, right? Right. But, from a theatrical standpoint, they didn't do well. But one of the most important reasons they didn't do well is because in the boardrooms, when the decisions were being made from a marketing standpoint, the print and advertising, there weren't people that looked like us that were making the decisions in terms of where to market or promote those films. You know, uh, a good friend of mine who produced, I'm not gonna say the name of the movie or the individual, but he produced an African-American based film and on that Monday, an article came out, or an ad, I should say, uh, for the film. It was in the Home and Garden magazine. This was an African-American film geared towards African-American males. I don't know many men that, that read the Home and Garden magazine. I, I don't. So 
all of that money, and we all know how much a full page ad costs in a right. magazine, a national magazine. Right. So think about that. And that and that um, ad ran for weeks, or it ran for a couple of months. You know, leading up, you know, to the release of the movie. But those are the decisions that are being made a lot of times right. for certain movies. The the individuals that are in the room don't look like us. And it's very important that, you know, you have the diversity in the room to make the right decisions. Yeah. And those that's another reason why we got involved with PA and distribution. Very important. That's very smart. Because I look at when I send my email blast out, you know, I picked newscasters and anchor people and people who were also spreading news. Because when I was sending out like little email blasts, I just did it because I didn't have anything really to do. And then someone approached me, a very popular blogger, and was like, you can write on my blog. Like, you're not even making money. I just like supporting African-American films and things that we were doing. And they're like, why are you just doing that? And I'm like, because I just, I like to do it as a pastime. But as I started seeing the people who were opening up, because I could see who reads it, and I'm like, really? Like, he looks at everything, and it was a lot of really big, you know, people, high profile, that were just getting the email blast, and, you know, that were keeping the news. And I started seeing the AJC was reprinting the articles from my email blast, because I was putting it out first, and I was like, and I was seeing all these different people, so then I realized, like, wow, but that's what happens when you don't really have proper training. But I'm passionate. If I'm passionate about what you're doing, it's no price tag on that. You know, like, I'm just going to get out there and push it to the people because you're my people and I want everybody to know. But I had to just own that into a little our pricing package as I learned. When you know better, you do better. Well, so, that's why you're but, successful at it because it's something you would do for free. Right. You know, I always I say, fine, what you do work well. Like and you'd be willing to do for no compensation and be able to get paid for it, and then you're living your dream. Right, yeah. exactly. So it just comes natural for you. And that's why I'm a wife now. There you go. <laughs> and that's why I'm still single, because I'm just doing all of this. There you <laughs> go, I love and it. And married. <laughs> I love it. So thank you guys for your time so much. I'm so excited about Followed. I am definitely going to put this out and actually get a couple of articles up. I still got till midnight <laughs> because it's still till midnight till it's the first. So as soon as we hop yeah. on the phone, it's the little edit. And I'm so happy that my girl Ramona DeBro taught me how to edit back in the day. She was like, oh, and she makes everything look so easy. And so she just does stuff while she's talking. And I'm like, this girl is not even human. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. You guys are so incredible. I'm so super proud of you. Um, I know we're going to get together offline, you know, and discuss how we can make this work. Because I think we make a great team. Look at us. We look great go. together. Yeah, we look great on camera. We we need to do a photo shoot, the three of us, you know, just to get things off the ground. Let's get it. <laughs> you tell us when, Jonah. We'll be there. You know, anything we could do for you uh, without without saying it's done. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for, for taking the time and, yes, you know, yes. doing this interview with us and letting people know about follow. Y'all got all y'all Sunday suits? Yeah, well, we won't tell them you made us put them on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's time to get y'all ready like y'all on y'all Sunday suits Sunday's best I don't know, Sunday dress but I had to you know represent so I said okay let me just do it like this but I appreciate you um, being our guest highlight on Real Wife Convos and the Real Wives will take a look at this and see how they can fit in because you know that's what we do as women we are trying to get in where we fit in but I'm going to tell them just be prepared have your stuff together, people. So Absolutely. I'm going to away with this, yeah. with the top three things that's very important. And see, you guys didn't know I was making a list as you were telling me that. And these are the things that's important that you need to have together, you know, before you approach people so that that way they know you're serious, you're ready to go, and that's less work they're going to have to do. And they need to feel that passion so that they'll know you are going to – remain attached to the project 
Because by the time you guys say yes, they might have just jumped shit to something else. Well, that's, <laughs> that's very true. And with us in particular, we want to help. So give us a reason to help. Allow us to be able to help by having things together that we need. But most people you encounter, they want to help, but they only need half an excuse to not. So <sighs> make sure you eliminate the reasons that people can say no to you in life. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Wayne. And no I'll problem. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Right. thank you so much. No, thank you. Enjoy so much. your day. All right, you too.